When choosing your next smartphone, some argue that the pure Android experience is the way to go. The question is if following an ideal is really better than everything else. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and this is Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge versus Google Nexus 6P. By now, most of the world already knows about Samsung's new Galaxy. The company does a tremendous job at marketing its flagships, and our reviews prove that this year, marketing isn't the only good thing about this phone. By contrast, Google is at the opposite end of the marketing food chain. But at least among geeks, the cult following behind pure Android experience is strong. Today, we decided to test what it's like to live on either side of the spectrum, and we chose the cream of the crop in their respective lineups. The Nexus 6P made by Huawei has been available since September 2015. It marks the first time that Google goes all out with aluminum, and design elements like the camera visor have proven to be quite unique these days. The Galaxy S7 Edge, in turn, has been available since February 2016, and this is an iteration of last year's Galaxy S6 with a glass finish matched by 7000 series aluminum, along with curves all around. The Nexus is more commanding in the hand, being 9mm taller, 5mm wider, and 21 grams heavier than the Galaxy. But in turn, the Galaxy scratches a millimeter in added thickness. The choice in materials leads to both phones offering a premium feel in the hand, and while the Nexus is more substantial, it's easier to grip than the edge curves of the Galaxy. In the specs department, the newer Galaxy S7 Edge punches hard. Its Snapdragon 820 processor is newer than the Snapdragon 810 on the Nexus. It has an extra gigabyte of RAM compared to the Nexus. Storage is expandable on the Galaxy, and the 3500 mAh battery on the Galaxy is better than the 3450 power pack on the Nexus, at least by a hair. Both devices sport fingerprint scanners in opposite directions, but the Nexus 6P is faster in unlocking the device, and also more convenient with capacitive unlock features. Where the Galaxy S7 Edge excels is an IP68 water and dust resistance, where the Nexus 6P has none. And finally, the Galaxy S7 supports fast and wireless charging, while the case of the Nexus is more about USB Type-C and some sort of fast charging that's not necessarily mentioned. Overall, it's amazing just how much hardware can change in just five months between both these devices. Showing off the goods, both devices sport gorgeous AMOLED panels protected by Gorilla Glass 4. The 5.7-inch panel on the Nexus might be larger in number compared to the 5.5-inch on the Galaxy, but the capacitive buttons on the Galaxy end up offering more screen real estate when compared to the Nexus. Powering each display is Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow. If you decided to go the Google route, you're running Android as the company intended. Bloat is nowhere to be seen, and the whole experience is designed around the availability of Google services. By contrast, Samsung is all about making its own services seen, and at times it clashes with Google's mentality by offering duplicates, like two calendars, for example. The only advantage of Samsung's approach is that if you want to make it look like stock Android through themes, well, there's something available for that, to a certain degree. Google has improved its approach to larger displays by providing a larger grid of icons on the launcher, but it's not as customizable as Samsung's. There's also the promise for multi-window support with Android N, but Samsung already has it, in addition to quick edge features that make access to shortcuts easier. Both devices offer some sort of always-on display, with Samsung providing additional customization features and a more elegant finish. The Nexus may not be always-on as it claims, but it does offer far more usability whenever it actually decides to work, which I never really figure out. Now, when you narrow down the experience of using both phones in day-to-day -day use, the difference is rather shocking. You'd assume that the pure vanilla Android experience without bloat would perform better, but it actually doesn't. There are cases where the Nexus 6P just slows down to a crawl, even with basic tasks like moving around through the launcher. 
The Galaxy may not be famous for its restraint to software, but its launcher is extremely fluid, and the added gig of RAM allows you to launch up to 14 applications at the same time on the background, which is crazy. Performance on graphics-intensive games is fluid on both devices, though, and I actually find the experience on the Nexus to be more immersive thanks to its front-firing speakers. Where the Galaxy forces you to find ways to not muffle that speaker in turn. And when it comes to the battery, the battle goes beyond just having similar power packs. The Snapdragon 820 on the Galaxy is clearly a more efficient machine, allowing you to go up to a crazy 5 hours of screen on time while the Nexus scratches 4, and charging on the Galaxy is also faster. Now where the experience is really tight is in the camera department. Both devices sport 12 megapixel shooters and the Galaxy even provides a brighter f1.7 aperture compared to f2.0 on the Nexus. Where the Nexus wins is in the larger pixels at 1.55 microns compared to 1.4 on the Galaxy. But where the Galaxy wins back, at least on paper, is in optical image stabilization versus electronic. Photos on both devices are gorgeous, with deep saturation and great contrast on both cameras. But in my opinion, the Galaxy tends to provide brighter photos without blowing out exposure, and also providing more detail. The face detection autofocus on the Galaxy is far quicker than on the Nexus, and the Galaxy is also faster at taking this shot as well. In dark scenarios, the speed of the Galaxy is clearly better than the Nexus, but oddly, I find the Nexus to provide more accurate depictions of the scenery when compared to the brighter photos of the Galaxy. And then our video comparison was rather odd, mainly because the uh, footage of the Nexus 6P looks stabilized on the phone, but once you pull it out, it's clear that the Galaxy S7 Edge is far superior thanks to optical limit stabilization. And this is just one of the reasons why this comparison is so complicated. The Nexus 6P may be the pure Android experience that Google intended, which at some point in time meant a lot. But in 2016, things are rather different, and the Galaxy S7 Edge proves to be a better device than the Nexus in pretty much every way you can pair it. This doesn't necessarily mean that the Nexus 6P is a bad phone. On the contrary, it's a very good phone, and it has a lot of potential mainly when it comes to software updates where we know that Samsung is terrible. For the Android purists, the Nexus 6P continues to be the best that Google has ever launched. But for everyone else, and I literally mean everyone else, the Galaxy S7 Edge continues to be one of the best phones of 2016. Folks, just like with this comparison, there is a lot of coverage for the Galaxy S7 Edge and the Nexus 6P. So make sure you follow us on social media and hit that subscribe button down below for more videos like this one. In addition, you can also catch our videos on Vessel, vessel.com slash pocket now, and follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera, or on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.